Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of instructional design models. Whether you're a teacher, a trainer, or someone interested in education, understanding these models can help you create effective and engaging learning experiences. I'll be covering seven different models, discussing when and how to use them, and providing examples for each. Let's get started. First up, we have the ADDI model. ADDI stands for Analysis, Design, Development, Implementation, and Evaluation. This model is a systematic approach to instructional design and is widely used in various educational and training settings. Analysis, identify the learning needs and goals. Design, plan the instructional strategy and content. Development, create the instructional materials. Implementation, deliver the instruction. Evaluation, assess the effectiveness of the instruction. Example, suppose you're developing a new learning management system, LMS. You start by analyzing what features teachers and students need. Design the LMS to include these features. Develop the software. Implement it in schools. And then evaluate its impact on teaching and learning outcomes. Next, let's look at the SAM model, or Successive Approximation Model. This model is iterative and agile, making it ideal for developing educational technology, where constant feedback and iteration are key. Preparation. Define objectives and gather requirements. Iterative design. Create prototypes and get feedback. Iterative development. Refine the prototypes based on feedback and develop the final product. Example, if you're designing an educational app, you might start by identifying the core features, preparation, create a prototype and test it with a small group of students, iterative design, and then refine the app based on their feedback before finalizing it, iterative development. Our third model is Universal Design for Learning, UDL. UDL focuses on creating flexible learning environments that can accommodate individual learning differences, making it perfect for integrating technology to enhance accessibility. The principles are multiple means of engagement, stimulate interest and motivation for learning, multiple means of representation, present information in different ways, multiple means of action and expression, Allow learners to express what they know in various ways. Example. When developing an online course, you could use UDL to ensure it includes videos, text, and interactive elements, multiple means of representation, offers different ways for students to engage with the material, multiple means of engagement, and provides options for students to demonstrate their understanding, such as quizzes, projects or discussions, multiple means of action and expression. Next, let's discuss the Dick and Carey model. This model takes a systems approach to instructional design, making it suitable for developing comprehensive educational technologies. The steps are identify instructional goals, determine what learners need to achieve, conduct instructional analysis, break down the skills and knowledge required, Analyze learners and contexts. Understand your audience and the learning environment. Write performance objectives. Specify what learners will be able to do. Develop assessment instruments. Create tools to measure learning. Develop instructional strategy. Plan the instructional approach. Develop and select instructional materials. Create or choose the materials. Design and conduct. Formative evaluation. Test and refine the instruction, design and conduct, summative evaluation, evaluate the overall effectiveness. Example, for an e-learning platform, you might start by identifying the educational goals, conduct an instructional analysis to determine the necessary content, analyze the learner's needs and contexts, write specific learning objectives, develop assessments, Create an instructional strategy that leverages interactive content, develop the materials, and then continually test and refine the platform based on feedback. Next, 
let's explore Gagne's nine events of instruction. This model provides a structured approach to designing effective learning experiences, making it ideal for integrating new educational technologies. The nine events are gain attention, capture the learner's interest, inform learners of objectives, explain what they will learn, stimulate, recall of prior learning, connect new information to what they already know, present the content, deliver the new information, provide learning guidance, offer support and guidance, elicit performance, have learners practice the new skills, provide feedback, give constructive feedback, assess performance, test learners' knowledge and skills, enhance retention and transfer, help learners retain and apply the new knowledge. Example, in an online coding course, you might start by showing an engaging video to gain attention, explain that the lesson will cover a specific coding concept, connect it to previously learned concepts, present the new information through interactive tutorials, provide guidance with examples, have learners practice coding, give feedback on their code, assess their coding skills with quizzes, and provide additional resources to help them retain and apply the new knowledge. Finally, let's discuss Merrill's Principles of Instruction, or MPI. This model is based on five core principles that make learning more effective and meaningful, especially when integrating new technologies. The five principles are task-centered. Learning is promoted when learners are engaged in real-world tasks. Activation. Learning is promoted when learners activate prior knowledge as a foundation for new learning. Demonstration. Learning is promoted when learners observe a demonstration of the skill to be learned. Application. Learning is promoted when learners apply their new knowledge and skills. Integration. Learning is promoted when learners integrate their new knowledge into their everyday life. Example. If you're developing a simulation-based training program for nursing students, you would start with task-centered activities that mirror real-life scenarios, task-centered. You'd help students recall their existing medical knowledge, activation, show expert demonstrations of medical procedures, demonstration. Allow students to practice these procedures in the simulation, application. And finally, encourage them to discuss and reflect on their experiences to integrate what they've learned into their future practice, integration. Finally, let's talk about the Ashore model. This model focuses on incorporating technology and media into the teaching process, making it ideal for designing tech-enhanced lessons. The steps are analyze learners, understand the demographics, prior knowledge, and learning styles of your students. State objectives. Define what students will achieve by the end of the lesson. Select media and materials. Choose the appropriate technology and materials to support the lesson. Utilize media and materials. Implement the selected technology and materials in the lesson. Require learner participation. Engage students with interactive activities. Evaluate and revise. Assess the effectiveness of the lesson and make necessary adjustments. Example, for a history lesson on World War II, you might analyze your students' familiarity with the topic, analyze learners, set clear objectives like understanding key events, state objectives, choose multimedia resources like documentaries and interactive timelines, select media and materials, use these resources in your lesson plan, utilize media and materials, have students participate in discussions and simulations, require learner participation, and finally, evaluate their understanding through quizzes and reflection essays, making changes for future lessons based on their performance, evaluate and revise. And there you have it, seven instructional design models that can help you develop and integrate new technologies in education. Each model offers a unique approach, so choose the one that best fits your needs and goals.